Okay, so I was gonna try and cram in Apple earnings analysis today, but I think I'll save that for tomorrow after all the headlines and hindsight hot takes have had a good amount of time to just cool down. Instead, let's talk about Google's big Pixel 4 leak announcement. Say hello. I can't wait to meet you. Basically, it's Face ID, but is it a cutting edge reinvention or just a kind of lame retread? Hit subscribe, and I am Iron Man, that bell gizmo, so YouTube will actually alert you when new videos go live. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. TLDR, it comes from poets who wanted to extol the virtue not of lazily reproducing what came before, but of drawing inspiration from what is to take the next step forward and create what will be. In other words, don't just copy, copy and improve. So while some people got all super finger pointy and Mountain View start your photocopiers when Google basically announced a duplicate of Face ID will be coming to the Pixel 4 later this fall, I got kind of hella interested and for that very reason. And yes, Google is already actively previewing not just renders of the new, very iPhone 11 looking camera system, but the very Face ID looking biometric facial geometry sensor. Don't get me started. We've had companies basically unbox and review their own products before, so why not leak them now too, right? I mean, we're in the post-post meta-meta media age where For the Lulls is now codified in marketing manuals and there are few, if any, norms left, so why not just have fun with it all? More seriously though, by Google's own admission, last fall's Pixel 3 flagship isn't selling in any significant quantities at all. So they likely fear no Osborne effect and that grants them a certain zero Fs left to lose freedom to tease the Pixel 4 in a way certainly Apple and probably Samsung and other big volume phone sellers wouldn't have even considered doing, at least not until they saw this, if it works. Anyway, back to the face ID. Google calls it Face Unlock, but based on their blog post, the system seems architected almost identically to Face ID. It has a flood illuminator and a dot projector to both infrared light up and high contrast mark up your facial geometry, just like Face ID. But where Face ID has a single IR camera to read that data, Google's Face Unlock is going to have two, one on each side of the full on top bezel forehead this expanded system is going to require to house it. Which, by the way, I have absolutely no problem with. Forehead, notch, hole punch, mechanical chuchers, what raise and lower selfie cams, they're all just stop gaps to me until we get all those sensors under the display. And that's still some time away. Early attempts at it are doing way less and not doing it anywhere nearly as well yet. But if you have a strong preference twixt one or t'other, as Captain Malcolm Reynolds would say, let me know in the comments. So then the facial geometry gets converted to math and passed off to Google's Titan security chip for secure authentication. Here's where things get a little fuzzy though. Apple has something similar to Titan, a secure block integrated into their custom A series processors to handle storage of the data. But Apple also has an integrated neural engine on the A series to both handle the matching and combat spoofing attempts. They spent a huge amount of time going over it at the introduction. Google's almost certainly gonna lean on Qualcomm Silicon to do similar, and they can even rope in the GPU if they have to. They just haven't outlined the process yet. And I'm super curious to see what, if anything, they may be doing differently. I mean like algorithmically, machine learningly different. If you already know or have any good guesses, hit up those comments and share. So why two IR cameras? Jerry Hildenbrand of Android Central speculates that it might be because the camera tech isn't yet as good as Apple's, so two systems are being used to compensate. Or Google is doing a stereo instead of a mono reading of the face data. Or that it might let the face unlock work at 180 degrees or off axis, like when the phone is sitting on a table. The 2018 iPad Pro can already do 180, hell, 360 degrees off one IR camera though. So while Google might need two cameras for that, it's clear two cameras aren't absolutely required for it. Also, there's no point reading off axis if you can't illuminate and dot project on it. So we'll have to wait and see about that part as well. My completely uneducated guess is that it'll let you unlock at slightly wider angles while you're lifting up the phone. So it can start sooner and handle a greater range of positions than a single IR camera would allow. If not something as extreme as sitting on a table. But again, if you know better, comment, comment, comment. Here's what Google has to say about it in their blog post. 
Other phones require you to lift the device all the way up, pose in a certain way, wait for it to unlock, and then swipe to get to the home screen. Other phones here means, of course, the iPhone, which is weird to be cutesy about given how brazenly Google names it in their photography compares every year. It reads weirdly in general though. You don't have to pose with Face ID, just look at it. The unlock is really fast and the swipe is a conscious design choice on the part of Apple. Part of the attention system is that it allows you to do things like unfurl private messages at a glance. And if it just unlocked and went directly to the home screen, it would blow through those notifications before you had time to see them, to read them. As a user, figuring out how to unlock without blowing past your notifications, if that's all you wanted to see, would then become a hugely awkward and annoying task and would totally negate the point of lock screen data in general, at least for the actual owner of the phone. For people who don't want or care about lock screen data or notifications though, I'm still a firm believer that Apple should add a toggle in settings for require swipe to unlock so that you could set it to blast right through the lock screen and go straight to the home screen if that's what you want to do. And if that is what you want to do, do me a favor and let Apple know about it in the comments. Otherwise, to make it sound like a limitation of the technology is just disingenuous. Pixel 4 does all of that in a much more streamlined way. As you reach for Pixel 4, Soli proactively turns on the face unlock sensors, recognizing that you may want to unlock your phone. Now, Soli is hella cool. It's pretty much radar in a tiny chip, using radio waves to detect and track movement, range, angle, and velocity in 3D space. It's like, I don't know, Daredevil in a chip. If the face unlock sensors and algorithms recognize you, the phone will open as you pick it up, all in one motion. So what problem are they actually trying to solve with Soli here? Face ID already works fine as you pick up the phone, all in one motion and everything, because phones have had motion sensors like accelerometers in them for well over a decade. The problem accelerometers run into is, yeah, you guessed it, when there's no acceleration. So for example, if your phone is on a dock or in a mount or on a shelf or you're holding it up in front of you, but you wait it and let it go back to sleep for some reason, then you have to either pick it up, tap the display to wake it, or just shake, shake, shake it into wokenessness. That's a super specific niche though, but if Soli could make it better, that'd be great. But Google specifically says Soli only triggers as you reach for your phone anyway. And most of the time, I mean product videos aside, you're gonna wanna be holding your phone anyway. So my guess is Soli is just using all the radar sense to warm up the camera system as you reach for it, as opposed to when you start lifting it. At worst, when your face isn't in the field of view before you start lifting, it'll make no difference. At best, when your face gets into the field of view before you even pick it up, it'll be like Touch ID 2 over Touch ID 1, just that much faster that you can feel the difference. Ironically though, I'd probably want the notification unfurling and lock screen info faster in that case, rather than the home screen, because my eyes would be able to glance at and parse the visual data faster than my hands would be able to start tapping away. But of course, I won't know for sure until I actually use it. So yell at me in the comments if you think I'm missing anything wicked obvious here. Better yet, face unlock works in almost any orientation, even if you're holding it upside down. Again, much like the 2018 iPad Pro and you can use it for secure payments and app authentication too. Also much like 2017's iPhone 10. And I don't mean to be snarky there, but Apple shipped the original Face ID almost two years ago, and it'll be pretty much exactly two years by the time the Pixel 4 ships, and a year post the omnidirectional iPad version. So the whole tone of the post comes off as a really weird flex on Google's part, given I'm sure some of us were hoping they'd be even further ahead by now. And instead of highlighting older Apple hardware and process features, they'd be talking up sizzling cool new Google machine learning algorithms that would, who knows, let us smirk or blink or twitch our noses to unlock into specific apps or something. Or even better, rather than using more sensors than Apple, require fewer sensors. Sort of how they managed really good portrait mode with even fewer cameras. You know, to get Face ID without a notch, much less a forehead. Now that would be a flex worth flexing. Google also pre-announced another feature for Soli, air gestures, which I'm kind of super cautiously neutral mystic about. Basically, they let you hold out your hands and cast spells on your phone. Not magic missile or avada kedavra or anything like that, more like imperious on the operating system. We've seen far less refined versions before from other companies. The same goes for air motion, which lets you jump into preset app shortcuts or control settings like music playback by hovering your hand about four inches away from the Z camera and pinching your hand into a sort of claw shape. If that sounds a bit ridiculous, well, 
that's because it kind of is. Soli is far more fine-grained than that though, and can detect things like you Mr. Miming to rotate the crown on a watch, or type keys or strum notes on an instrument. I'm super psyched about the technology, but currently the opposite way from how Google is presenting it, pointing out, not in. One day when I'm wearing augmented reality glasses or lenses or implants, I'm gonna wanna navigate the AR and VR world entirely through highly refined real world emulating air gestures. But stuff like this is what we need to get to stuff like that. So at best, this initial implementation is an instant revolution like multi-touch and at worst, just a gimmick like LG for now. But either way, we get to the future faster. And if you wanna be part of that future, check out Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app with over 50 interactive courses, including the Computer Science Essentials program, where you'll dive into the big ideas in algorithm design in a course designed for anyone learning computer science for the first time, as well as programmers looking to deepen their understanding of algorithms. It's so cool. There's no coding required and you'll go hands-on with a few specific algorithms and learn how to design ones yourself. Think about it you wouldn't be watching videos about the current big tech breakthroughs. You'd be helping shape the next even bigger ones. To support Vector and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, head over to brilliant.org vector and get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you, seriously, for supporting the show. It is gonna be so much silly, stupid fun watching people who absolutely hated the idea of Face ID on the iPhone suddenly fall in love with it on the Pixel, but so was watching them call the iPhone design boring but not the almost identical Pixel 1 design, portrait mode a gimmick until the Pixel 2 adopted it, and the notch on the iPhone 10 super ultra ugly until the Pixel 3 said hold my notch beer. But it's just as much silly, stupid fun watching Apple quote unquote invent features Android phones have been using for a year or two as well. And the vice being totally versed by the people who hated Google or Samsung or Huawei or whomever for it, but suddenly fall notch over lightning port in love with it on the iPhone. Personally, I just want the future faster. So I want all of this stuff, but I also want to analyze the hell out of it with all of you because that's where this channel lives. So hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments and let me know what you think about Google's Pixel teaser, shameless face ID facsimile or next generation sensor supremacy. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.